everybody, welcome to Teensy Vintage. This is Teresa, and it's been a minute. Welcome to all my new viewers, and hello again to all of my uh, previous subscribers. Uh, I have been super busy lately and haven't been able to get into the studio, but last night I said, you know what, I'm going to make some art, damn it. And here we go. So, I grabbed this vintage uh, sewing pattern which I got at the Creative Reuse store for 25 cents and I love it. And I just couldn't bring myself to cut the pattern. I don't know, sometimes I get freaked out. It's okay, I made a copy and I'm using the copy in my piece today. Mostly I just wasn't sure if I was feeling serious or just wanted to make something. And I figured, you know what, if I cut this copy up and make something that I don't really like, then that's okay. Um, it turns out I really do like what I made. Um, but, you know, sometimes you're just like, mm, and you want to be a little precious about something, and that's fine. So I'm using all of the pieces of the front of the pattern. I thought about copying the back of the pattern too, but then I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to use some stamps. So here I'm just saving pieces of the text, the number of the pattern, something about um, getting a pattern book or something, I don't know, just to add to this page, because it's pretty obvious that it's a sewing pattern drawing. I loved the colors, this beautiful mid-color green and a teal, and I just was like, yes, it really drew my eye. These two sassy 60s ladies. And here I am just kind of auditioning where to put these text pieces. And um, it took me, it took me a few minutes. I just wasn't sure. And you know what? It's okay. Sometimes I sit down, I know exactly what I'm going to make. Sometimes I sit down and I have no idea. Um, this was one of those no idea times. Um, and sometimes it's like, just give yourself a focal and run with it. So now I'm going to use some stamps to fill up our background. This is a great stamp. I don't think it has a name. It's from Studio Light. It's called Industrial 2.0 Stamps. And it doesn't have a name on the package, which seems weird, but I will describe it to the best of my ability in the description below, along with all the other supplies that I'm using. I'm also using my brand new uh, Ranger Archival Ink in Graphite. They just got this color, uh, gosh, this month, I think. It's beautiful. It is a dark gray. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, it's really nice. If you know their watering can color, it's darker than that. Um, so it's a beautiful gray. Now I'm going in with a smaller stamp. This is the Oh gosh, what do they call this one? Reckoner Digit Stamp from AALL and Create. And I'm using this smaller stamp to go in randomly to kind of fill up the space. All right, so then we put our focal back on there. I decide, you know what? I need to trim a little more of this white space away. I was, I was not into fussy cutting. Some days I don't mind it, other days I just want to scream. <laughs> I was trying to get away with as little fussy cutting as possible, but I ended up fussy cutting a lot, which is fine. All right, so now I am going to add some color. And instead of using paint, I'm just going to dip my brush, this is a round brush, into my Lindy's Starburst Spray. Um, bottle and I'm just using it as a watercolor so instead of spraying it I'm just applying it with a brush and some water and the only water I really used was a little bit that I used to wet the brush in the first place so I'm covering up a good portion of the middle of the page but leaving some negative space around the edges just because I like that I'm going to dry this ink. This is a beautiful ink. 
you've got to shake it to get all the little mica flakes floating evenly throughout it, but it's it's a dark, shimmery turquoise, and it's hard to see on this video. You can see a little bit of it shining near the top there, but it almost glows. I love it. Um, but yeah, I want to make sure everything is nice and dry. I use the brush to add a little more ink in certain places so that you would have you know, more transparency, less transparency, you know, just to give it some interest, some variation. And now I'm trying out my little pieces of text again. We're going to ditch that medium sized piece because it really just didn't fit. I thought about adding some some old vintage tags from another digital kit that I had, but none of them really spoke to me. So instead, I'm gonna use this stencil and some white acrylic paint. The stencil is from the Crafters Workshop. It's a six by six. It's called Big Spools, um, designed by Julie Fay Fan Balzer. It's a great stencil. All of these circles are just a little bit different and I'm going to use the white paint to cover up some of the gorgeous turquoise, the teal, um, just because I wanted a bit more interest in the background. I also wanted to tone it down just a little bit. You could use gesso instead of white paint. I just picked up the acrylic paint because it was right in front of me on my desk, and I am just adding some circles randomly. Now that I look at it on the video, it looks a little bit like pineapple slices. <laughs> it's good to crack yourself up, right? Yes, there you go. If you can't make yourself laugh, who are you going to make laugh? All right, got our heat tool again, making sure everything is nice and dry because the next step is going to be to glue all of our paper pieces on top. And I'm sorry, this is off screen, I believe. Ah, yes. I'm using a little bit of the leftover white paint to go around the edges. Just to put some paint on the paper. It doesn't really do anything dramatic, but it just kind of blends out the edges so that they kind of float into the background. They're not so harsh. I'm using an old makeup sponge. I'm pretty sure it was the same sponge I used in the previous project that I, I uh, shared here on YouTube. Those makeup sponges are great and you can use them multiple times. You just cut off the old paint covered spot and use the, use the next little bit. It just gives a really smooth coverage um, to your page. All right, so I'm pretty happy with these text pieces. I'm going to use my glue stick to glue all of them down. Glue stick is great because it's quick and easy and not very gloppy. Also want to use something to smooth out your pieces. This is a um, tool I got from scrapbook.com, but you could use an old credit card or um, you know, an old hotel key or whatever you have that's flat. And you can use that to smooth out your pieces so that number one, they're adhered all the way. And two, they don't have any wrinkles or bubbles. And I apologize for my sniffles. We're just having fun with allergies today. <laughs> it's like every day. <laughs> okay. Yay! I'm very happy with this. So now I'm using my Stabilo All pencil to go in and just give a little bit of outlining here and there. There's a lot of white on white in certain spots. I'm also going to activate the pencil with some water and a teeny tiny brush. So I'm just giving a little definition to this lady in the foreground just to kind of give her a little bit of shadow, make her look a little more um, a 3D, I guess. And not really, but you know what I mean. 
less flat. All right. And just going to activate all of that pencil. All right. Also going to make something for the lady in the background to stand on. Otherwise, she's just kind of floating there like a weird balloon. <laughs> um, I didn't worry about any ground for the lady in the green because, one, her legs just kind of ended in the original, and two, she's got that sign in front of her. So I figure, you know what, we'll just leave her be. Here I'm going in with a Neo Colors um, Aquarelle uh, crayon. It's a water soluble wax pastel. This one is called Greenish Blue. It's beautiful. I just wanted to make some of these a little more interesting. So I am going around the edges of the white uh, stencil that we did a moment ago and activating that with some water to give it a cool watercolory kind of look. So I've got that color and I'm also going in with some yellow. So I'm using the three colors that are next to each other on the, the color wheel, green, blue, and yellow. And the yellow woody was just too big. It was the, the pencil itself was too big for the, the detail that I was trying to get. So I switched over to a yellow Stabilo all and, um, and use that instead. So some of the circles are, you know, a teal, some are going to be yellow. And some I left alone. So it's all variety. Variety is what makes your picture look interesting. Um, and, and just gives some dimension. Plus all these colors are really pretty together. And I just like them. <laughs> yeah. This is turning out really nicely. And uh, I'm gonna do a few more of the circles here. My video, unfortunately, um, my phone ran out of battery, so the video is gonna end a few moments earlier than, than me actually finishing the page, but it is 95% done. Uh, thank you so much for watching, y'all. I appreciate you so much. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.